Hello, my friends. Welcome to Nanny and the Moose. I'm Nanny and the Moose will be here in just a minute. Today we're going to chat about some home remedies that mom and grandma used to use to heal our ills and our cuts and our bruises. And I want you to think about your remedies that were used on YouTube. This is going to be a fun video where Moose will tell us about some of the things his mom and grandma used, and then it'll be my turn, kind of back and forth, and then it will be your turn. So stay tuned if you think you might like to listen to this. And of course, everyone's clamoring to see Moose again. Well, here we go, folks. We've both got our notes and we're going to do a uh, his turn, my turn of the remedies and the home, all the home remedies that grandma and mom used on us to heal our ills and our cuts and bruises. Think about it, cause you're gonna tell us about yours too. All right, who goes first? You told me to wear blue. <laughs> yeah, we always seem to wear blue. Is Gershwin a Rhapsody in blue? Well, you are. So are you a Rhapsody? Well, my color is blue too, so there you go. I've got six things listed here. Whoops, where are they? Here they are. And I have probably more than six too, so you can go first. Oh. With a short story. Save the long one for later. Mercure chrome. Mercure chrome. You put it when you had a cut, they put Mercure chrome on. Didn't do a thing. Looked nice. Also in the uh, cabinet was iodine. Had a skull and crossbones on it. I put that on. Oh, did that hurt? So you never got iodine. You only got mature chrome. It's just, just gorgeous. Gorgeous color of red. <laughs> well, you never know what it did. You know, we we also use mercure chrome. It's a tough one to say and iodine in our um, vinegar and oil when we sunbathed in the backyard. Uh, I always remember Easter vacation came, I'd come home from college, get out the iodine and the, cob, the, the oil, cooking oil, can you believe this? And smear it on and we'd sit out in the sun because you looked better with a tan when you went back to school again. Remember that? It's not, a, it's not a, what we're on the subject of. Though. Well, that's true, but <laughs> it was one of the it old It reminded remedies. you. Okay. It reminded me of it. Do okay. I go now? All right, you get another turn. Sunburn. Right. My parents said, okay, take his shirt off, let him go out, pile in the water, and get a good solid sunburn. And it hurt. Oh. And what they would put on it was vinegar. What the heck that did, I don't know. But the idea was you get the first sunburn of the season, then you can run around with your shirt off. You didn't, you had to keep your shirt off. <laughs> um, and you'd get tan, so. Uh, all right, I, I remember one. My mother used to use Noxzema on us. Remember Noxzema? It was okay to get the sunburn, but in order to get the pain out that night as you tried to sleep, she would put Noxzema on, which felt cool, and it was so hard to get off, remember? I never got, all I got was vinegar and stunk like hell. Oh. No, I, I actually smelled got like the Noxzema. Smelled like a Caesar salad. <laughs> Oh, that was, that was awful. But you know what? We didn't know about sunburn in those days. And I don't think there was a sunscreen of sorts. Now, a little bit later on, my mom, or maybe it was me, did I start putting on, and, and of course our poor little kids, they still remember being so sunburned and hurting. And I think I might've used a little bit of aloe from the aloe plant because we're also going to talk about some herbs that have good go ahead, medicinal go uh, value too. All right, let me see. Um, I'll pick a good one. Okay. What happened when you got a bee sting? We used to call them wasps, those, those big black ones. They were awful. You get a wasp sting, sting, and then the first thing that they would do is get a tweezer and we'd be screaming in pain and mom would pull out the stinger and then what do you think she put on? She spit on the dirt, made mud. Right. <laughs> she made a little mud patty with some saliva mud patty and slapped it on the bee sting. 
and I guess that was supposed to draw the venom out, right? And maybe cool it a little bit. That's what they thought. All right, your turn. You want um, fact or fiction? I don't want fiction, I want real fact. Okay, I'll give you one. Warts. Oh gosh, yeah. I got a couple. A lot. There's a way to get rid of warts and it was either Huckleberry Finn or Mark or uh, Tom Sawyer. And what you did was, if you want to get rid of your warts, and this is right from Mark Twain, you went to the, um, went out in the street and you got a dead rat, a dead cat. You sure this isn't fiction? And then you went to the cemetery at midnight and you slang it around your head three times and threw it and you said, cat go away, warts go away. And what do you know? Oh, that's strictly from Mark Twain. That fact or fiction. But uh, that, that's debatable. But I'm sure your mom didn't do that because she didn't like rats. She didn't what like she dead cats either. <laughs> oh, God. All right, let's get back to uh, real life here. Um, let me see. Um, oh, I have one. Diarrhea. When you had diarrhea, your mom or your grandma would cook some rice and... And then she would put it in a, um, um, what do you call that cloth? That call thing? it a handkerchief. All right, that would drip through and all the starchy water from the rice would come out into a pan. And she would give it to you in a cup and have you drink it. Did it work? I don't remember it ever working. <laughs> <laughs> and it tasted terrible. Okay, your turn. <laughs> True or false? True. Once when I was seven or eight years old, I was with my cousin up in the Bronx and it was Easter. And we got our Easter baskets and we ate everything in it. Jelly donuts, marshmallow chickens, <laughs> chocolate Easter bunnies, whatever was in it, we ate the whole darn basket. And all the while my grandma, Nana, was looking at me and looking at Robbie and saying, this is not good, this is not good. But I stayed overnight there and I went to sleep, just about to sleep, when she said, Billy, here's another piece of chocolate. And I just said, oh, no, thanks, Nana. And she gave one to Robbie. The next morning we had explosive bowel movements. She had fed us x lax had like X-Lax in those days, Chocolate huh? flavor too. You oh didn't know she was giving. Oh, thanks, Nanny, for some more chocolate. Well, speaking of that, I have one and... That's true. That's true. Okay, I have a true story too. My mother used to pay me 25 cents a teaspoon full of anything that I would take for any ill. And my problem was not diarrhea. <laughs> I was constipated a lot as a child. So my mother relied on castor oil and I use castor oil on my face now. What an analogy. Anyway. <laughs> I hate to remark on that. I know. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Bite your tongue. Bite your tongue. Anyway, I drank a lot of castor oil and now it is used for many things. It's supposed to help grow hair on your hair. Um, I even, the other day, one of my viewers said perhaps it would help because I put it on my face under my makeup. It w might help my eyelashes grow longer too. So there you have it. There they are. Okay, we're going together on some of these, so I really don't know whose turn it is here. My but... turn. Okay, go. When I was in the Boy Scouts, the troop that I belonged to had a cabin up in the Ramapo River, Ramapo Mountains. Peckies? Uh, mm-hmm. That's where the Ramapo Mountains. Uh, I'm not sure. I only know the other ones. <laughs> so anyway, we would go there for long weekends, long holiday, Easter, Thanksgiving. Anyway, we would pack in all our food and one of the kids, you know, 12 years old or something, would cook. he would shop for it and then cook it and we would have whatever he bought, we would eat it. And if they were there for a week, by the second day, I had indigestion. Oh my God. 
So I went home and told my mama, and she said, okay, I'll have that fixed for you. She went to the drugstore, and the druggist made up rhubarb and soda, whatever the hell that is. Wow. And uh, I brought it with me, it was in my knapsack, and it worked for every camping trip, rhubarb and soda. Look that up. You know, I was doing some research on herbs and their medicinal value too. And rhubarb did come up. And, and when I talk about the herbs oh, really? and some of the, yeah. So um, I'll, I'll mention to you, I can't remember what it was right now, but rhubarb does have some medicinal value. And maybe that's it. That's it. Um, I want another funny one. Let's see. Um, oh, here's my list. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, when you had um, a sore throat, your mom would take some salt, regular salt, mix it with water and tell you to gargle with salt water. And you couldn't swallow it, but you gargled. Now, whether that helped or not, I, I don't that, know. I think that worked, yeah. Perhaps it did. Yeah. And, and I'm gonna get another one in here. I'm gonna sneak in another Shoot. one. You and can do when two if you when I had a chest cold, my dad and I'd be in bed. My dad would make hot toddy for me. He would take whiskey and honey. He'd put honey in it. Lemon and, juice. And lemon juice, mix it up. Not a big glass, of course. And I would drink this. And this was supposed to relieve the congestion and the catarrh. That's an old fashioned word, isn't it? In your chest. And that might have worked. But I never liked whiskey after that to begin with, so. He used to drink one in a 12 ounce glass too. Ah, no, he didn't. Oh. <laughs> okay, your turn. Do you have any more? Only have one more. Okay. True or false? <laughs> I'll go on. I don't care. Just tell it to us and we'll decide if okay. it's true or false. If you have the hiccups, how do you cure hiccups? Well, I have one remedy for that, so you tell yours. My mother would take a clean, clean, Kleenex. copper oh. penny. <gasps> you put it on your tongue and hold it there for five minutes and your hiccups will go away. How many uh, pennies did you swallow during that? <laughs> I found them if I swallowed them. Because <laughs> you know what? In my Moose. diaper. When I met Moose, one of the things that happened to him all the time, and not necessarily when he was drinking, was he would get hiccups that sometimes would last for hours and hours. And, and after we married, um, he'd have these terrible bouts of hiccups. And everything we tried from, you know, drinking the water, holding your breath, doing a, holding your nose and doing other things, um, he would hiccup all night long in his sleep sometimes. Yeah, I remember once two or three days, it was during the uh, inauguration of a new Pope, and I had the hiccups, I was trying to watch it on television and had the hiccups the Can whole time. Can you imagine? Two, three days. Yeah. Now, while we're talking of hiccups, um, there is a, a remedy that I'm sure a lot of your moms and grandmas used where my grandma, would take a little piece of Kleenex or toilet paper, rip it up, not a big piece, and stick her tongue up, put it on her tongue for a minute, and stick it in between your eyes right here. And that was supposed to relieve hiccups. Now, I could never, and it did, especially with the babies. And you the couldn't take ones. it off? No, and could they- Could I take it off now? Yeah, but they say, that the reasoning behind that is the distraction that you would try and see it you could see portions of it and you would concentrate so much on that piece of paper uh, in between your eyes that the concentration would make the hiccups go away yeah not necessarily swallow the penny you know. how many of your grandmas did that too tell me <laughs> okay let's see um what else do I have to I have a couple more. How about this one? No, that's How about a, that one. All right, this one. Okay. <laughs> um, when you had a toothache, my mom would mix up, no, she would take the aspirin, a regular aspirin, 
and she would say, put it in your mouth and put it right on the tooth that was bothering you. Keep your teeth closed, clench, and it would dissolve, of course. And the aspirin really would relieve some of the pain from that toothache. You know what I can remember? Oil of clove being used to uh, reduce the pain. Where'd you get that at the drugstore? Yeah. Yeah. Well, worse. So these are so interesting, aren't they? I wonder how many of these um, old fashioned remedies were eventually tested by scientists and then incorporated in some form of the drug that we use to fix all these ills nowadays. Do you think, for instance, the oil of clove is put in pain medication or obviously we know aspirin, but um, what, what are the properties within mud that would draw the venom out of a bee sting? You know, I just remembered one, but it's not on my list. You know, these, these tubes like this, and if your nose is stuffed up. <laughs> oh, Vicks. Well, whatever was in there, Vicks or Mentholatum or something. Yeah. My grandfather had one. And what was in there was raw horseradish. Oh, of course. <laughs> he sniffed that up, but I guess it cleared his throat. It cleared his well, throat. Well, it would definitely clear your nasal canal. That's horseradish. For sure. Yeah, yeah. That, now, that's one that I, I had never heard of, but I'm sure that worked. Well, really. I can make up some more. I know you could make up some, but let's get some through some of them. Now, this is one. How many of you ever got styes on your eye? Um, a sty was something that you would wake up in the morning and your eye would be totally closed. I remember as a kid, and I have never had a sty since I was 12, 13 years old. I don't know, maybe styes were, were in at that time. Why don't people get them now? Never hear about styes. And I couldn't open my eye and I would holler for my mom. It was all crusted. And now if I'm not mistaken, I think it was either Epsom salts mixed with water or boric acid and water. Boric I, acid. I looked that up the other day. And um, do you know they used boric acid for cleaning um, in, in cleaning solvents and various other things like that. And they put it in an eye cup? Yes. My my mother had these little eye cups that were sort of like the little whiskey, Yeah. what do you call those, jiggers, jaggers? Yeah, I remember her drinking out of it. <laughs> and, and she would put that on my head. I have to push my head back and it would wash out my eye. The sty would disappear, but from what I read a couple days ago about boric acid, do you know they still sell it? I looked up in CVS, all these things. Now, my mom had a bottle of witch hazel, a bottle of boric acid, a bottle of Epsom salts, and some other strong, <laughs> I would almost think- Epsom it's... salts in water for like, for like a, a strain, a, spa, a, a strainer? No, the thing you, when you turn your ankle. Sprain. Sprain to sprain. Yeah. Yeah. They Epsom would, salts. What the heck? Well, they happen? would make a paste maybe with that. No, and it was then, water. Hot water. Hot water. And Epsom salt. Yeah. And, and of course, you would soak your feet. That was also used for infections of your toes. Uh, Epsom salts and boric acid were, were the thing my mother used a lot to cure all kinds of things. Once again, whether it worked or not. Let me just see before we conclude this portion of our talk, and then we'll talk more about herbs and the medicinal value of herbs. I use herbs mostly for cooking. Do I get to go home if we do an herbs? And you can leave when we do herbs. But see the ones that I'm drying up there now? I already took oh, uh, yeah. pictures of those. So you can dry herbs or you can use them in one of those mortar and pestle, which I do have one. So we'll talk about that later. That but scary. <clears throat> let me see if there's anything else here. Toothaches, um, sunburns, we talked about that, swelling, cod liver oil. Oh my gosh, that was for your dry skin. I drank so much cod liver oil. My mother says she used to bathe me in it as a baby for my dry skin. Um, we had it. We had a heat lamp. How many of you had those big ultraviolet heat lamps? We would use that and they turned it on. You're only supposed to have it on for what, a couple minutes? 
And so I used to use it to get a sunburn on my face. No, no. Isn't that terrible? That's I not did. Good. I know. That was for spraying. But it was supposed to be, I think it had two yeah, settings. Aching backs, yeah. Aching backs and sore muscles. But I don't know whether they still have heating lamps nowadays. Um, I think we, I think we, uh, oh, the camphor bags. Oh, yeah. Remember the camphor bags. Now, camphor was kind of like mothballs, wasn't it? Wasn't it I a don't powder or it, it was like. made it was into, always in a bag? In a little um, cloth. Nana would sew it up about that big. And hang it around yeah. your neck. Remember that? And you'd have to go to school or play <laughs> with that camphor bag underneath your undershirt. We all wore undershirts. And that was that was if you had a cough. That was supposed to heal your chest. I can remember my grandma making a little bag and pinning it to an infant's uh, onesie, you know. Exactly. That was also where your miraculous medal was to keep you safe. That and it did. Jesus would protect us. And we all Mary, had these not little... Mary, Jesus. Was it Mary? Oh, the miraculous medal too. But all little tiny blue ribbon, a little tiny medal that was always on our undershirt. I'm just looking at those herbs up there. Yeah. Is that a toad hanging up there? Do you use toads too? <laughs> no. I do. I would never put a Looks toad. Looks like a toad. I would never put a toad up there. Maybe a mouse, but not a toad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's it. We talked about rhubarb and mud on the bee stings and uh, cuts and mercurochrome, sore throats and honey and whiskey and lemon. I think we did it. it must be time for a kiss. A French kiss? Mm -hmm. Moose. <laughs> Thank you, Moose. This was fun. Good to be here. And and I want you, you all to come back now, you hear? <laughs> they will. They're always clamoring for you. But do think about some of your uh, your own experiences with grandma and mom and some of the very strange home remedies that they used on you and your brothers and sisters too. I think it's getting hot. I feel the bubbles under my eyes and it's only 10 in the morning. So I'm we'll going. conclude. Goodbye. You Me can too. do the, the witchcraft now. No, I'll do that later. Oh, oh. Yeah. What the hell is that thing? <laughs> I know you all love Moose's little cameos when he jumps in. You never know what, he'll never tell me what he's going to talk about. He loves to surprise me, and I'm sure he surprises you too. So, our next video might be the medicinal herbs. I had prepared something for that, but I think we went a little long with this, so. And I also have um, a, a mini fashion show coming up, maybe the one after the next one. I have uh, been running into some cute tops, mostly fall things, and um, I decided I, I might, might be time for a, a couple of um, fashion shows. <clears throat> I've been trying to decide what I'm going to take to Idaho. We have a trip coming up where Moose and I are going up to visit our son Billy and his wife Bonnie at Bear Hollow Inn. Can't wait to get up there and um, it's still pretty hot up there but I'm anxious to see how the vines are going that we planted a year ago. They look gorgeous in the pictures that he's been sending. These are, uh, he planted about 300 plus grape, well we all did, we helped. Um, a year ago in May and June. And uh, we had a wonderful time doing that. And I'm anxious to see how they are now. Evidently, they won't bear fruit until next year, I think he said. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I would like all of you to think about your own experiences with mom and grandma and some of the things that they used on you to heal you. Some of them worked, some of them maybe didn't. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all those thumbs up, keep those going. And those of you who haven't subscribed yet, please think about it. Love you all, God bless us all. Bye for now.